My name is Cody, and I'm with the console team at HashiCorp, and I'm here to take you on another tour of HashiCorp console service on Microsoft Azure. In our previous videos, we showed you you could take an Azure Kubernetes service cluster, as well as virtual machines living in Azure, and join them to console. Once in console, we were able to leverage the service mesh capabilities to create secure communication between each of our application tiers. In our previous examples, we kept these applications running completely separate, but with mixed platform environments, customers are going to want to be able to move application traffic between both virtual machines and Kubernetes clusters, and in many cases, we'll want a path to be able to migrate workloads that live in virtual machines into those clusters. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can accomplish that. Let's jump in and take a look. We start off in the Azure console. Let's jump into our resource group and take a look at the lay of the land. In this environment, we have our Kubernetes cluster still deployed, as well as several virtual machines that exist within our environment. We also have our HCS cluster here. And if we switch into console and go to our nodes view, we can see those same nodes registered inside of console. Here we have that same Kubernetes cluster and we have four virtual machines in place. These virtual machines represent our front end, our API and our database. And we've got one additional machine that we're gonna talk about in a few moments. If we click over to the services view, we can see the services that have been registered against console. If we jump into our front end service, we can see that this service has been registered against our virtual machine, HCS client 01, which was in the nodes list that we looked at previously. If we click into this actual service, we can see a health check that's being registered against port 80 to ensure that this service is being registered as healthy. These are configured as part of the service registration. I've also added in uh, metadata for this application I've set a key of version and a value of version one. This is the metadata that we're going to use to help us migrate this virtual machine running service into our Kubernetes environment. If we go back to our services view, we can see we've configured our API in the same way with a health check running and the V1 metadata in place. Finally, if we go and take a look at our intentions, we can see that we have a default deny in place, restricting all communication that's not been explicitly allowed We've got communication allowed from our front end services to our Python API services, and then our API services going to each of the databases that we have in place. You'll probably remember our demo application from our previous video. If I refresh, we can see that this application is currently running in our environment and communication is currently passing. You can see the API successfully connected and the database is successfully connected. If I click on our messaging tab, we can see that I'm currently running on the virtual machine based database. This application is currently in dark mode, and we wanted to deploy a new version that's running in light, as well as update some of the different components on this Angular application. So let's take a look at how we can do that by deploying this application onto Kubernetes and then using console to migrate the running service onto that Kubernetes cluster. Before we go and deploy our application, let's switch back into console and take a look at our services list. We're going to register a new application into console by deploying it onto a Kubernetes cluster that has console installed on it as well. That application deployment is going to register against our existing front end and API services. We're going to define a new metadata version onto that application so that we can use console's layer seven routing abilities to switch the traffic path from the old system to the new system. Let's head into the command line and take a look. If we do a cube control get pods, we can see that currently we have console installed but our application's not running. Let's take a look at our actual application manifest. There's a couple of important things to call out in this application. First off, we have several pods that are running with this console HashiCorp connect inject true. This tells console to inject the sidecar proxy that'll allow communication inside of the service mesh. For the applications that we're doing multiple versions on, we've also attached the service meta version and annotation. For the Kubernetes services, we're doing version two, and we're telling it that it operates on an HTTP port. Similar to before, we've set up upstreams that tell our application how to communicate with other applications inside of the service mesh. We do this for each tier of our application. So as an example, for our front end, we set connect inject to true, our service port to 80, our upstream to the API on port 5000, and our meta version also to version two. Let's go ahead and deploy this application. Cube control apply. And now while we wait for the load balancer to come up, we can do a Kube control, get service against that namespace, and just wait. 
While this is deploying, let's switch back into console and take a look at what's happening. We can see the individual components have started to come up and we're seeing new registrations into our actual services. So if we go in and we take a look at our front end, we can now see that we have two IDs for the actual front end application. Likewise, if we take a look at the API tier, we have two as well. If we take a look in the front end application again, and we dive into the actual app, we can see that metadata version of two, V2 came through. If we go in and take a look at the sidecar, we can see that upstreams have been identified for how to communicate to backend services within the service mesh. If we switch back into the command line now, we can see we have an IP address for our load balancer. And we can go ahead and bring up the new version of our application. The new version of our application is also successfully connecting. So now let's see how we can set this up to actually migrate the previous version of the service to this new version. Since we have two actual web servers that we're working with that are part of the same service, we're gonna deploy a software load balancer in front of these workloads so that we can have that act as part of the mesh and do the traffic splitting between these systems. If we go back into console, we can see the current lay of our land. We're gonna switch back into the command line and register that new service. If we take a look at the services file that currently exists within our, within our console directory, we can see the service that we're going to be registering. We've named this FE load balancer for FELB. We've named this FELB for front end load balancer. We've given it a port of 80 and told it to communicate with a sidecar proxy pointed at our front end service. We'll do a console services register. And if we switch back into console, we can see that service currently coming up. As you can see, this FELB service has a sidecar proxy, which means that it's actively participating in our service mesh. Having our clients access their service through this FELB service is how we're gonna facilitate migrating this application from virtual machines onto the Kubernetes cluster. We're going to leverage the layer seven routing features of console to set up a traffic splitter between those two services that is gonna come from this front end load balancer. Let's jump into the command line and set that up. In this directory, we can see a number of configuration files that relate to how we're setting up our traffic splitting. This first file is what we call a service defaults file. This is what we, how we set that the application is an HTTP application. HTTP applications can take advantage of layer seven routing features. We'll go ahead and write this configuration to console and move on to our next file. This file defines out a service resolver. Service resolvers are how we tell console about multiple versions of an application. Earlier, I discussed setting up the meta tags with a version key. In this case, I'm setting two version subsets of the front end application, the V1 and the V2. The V1 is obviously our virtual machine based application and the V2 is our Kubernetes based application. We'll go ahead and write this configuration now. Finally, if we take a look at our actual service splitter, we can see that we're setting this up to split traffic between those two services and we're sending all of our traffic to the virtual machine service for now we're sending none of our traffic to the V2 service. And finally, again, we'll write this configuration as well. If we switch back into console now, and we go into our front end service, we can select this routing tab, and we can see a visual representation of how this traffic is being sent down to the endpoint services. I've got a front end router, so any traffic going to the default route of the application will go into the front end splitter which will then send it to either V1 or V2 based on the splitter configuration. We can see all traffic is set to go to V1 right now. Before accessing this traffic, I need to create an intention to allow communication. So I'll go into my intentions tab. I'll create my intention, front end load balancer, going to front end and allow traffic. With our traffic splitter in place and our intentions configured, let's go ahead and launch a new browser and hit our application.
Our application is loaded successfully and connected to its backend services. This is using our virtual machine-based application still, so our customer traffic is the same as we would have originally expected, users hitting our previous version of our application. Let's go ahead and do our migration to the Kubernetes application now. We'll switch back into the command line, and we'll edit our service splitter file. And we'll change the weight from 100 to 0, and change version 2 to 100% and we'll rewrite our configuration. If we refresh our application now, we can see that we're loading the new Kubernetes version of our application. We've successfully migrated connectivity from the virtual machine infrastructure into Kubernetes. Let's go ahead and apply the conf same configurations for our API tier. If we take a look at files four, five, and six, we can see very similar configurations to what we had applied for our front end service. Let's go ahead and apply these configurations now as well. And if we switch back into console and we go to our services view, we can look at our API tier and the routing in the same way and see the similar split configuration that we have set up previously. If we go back into our application, we can take a look at our messaging tab and see that we're still connected to the virtual machine-based database. All we've changed is migrating the front end to be running in Kubernetes, while the API tier is still connected to the database tier living in virtual machines. Let's set up a splitter to split traffic 50% between the virtual machine traffic and the Kubernetes environment to make sure that nothing breaks. We'll go into our splitter for our API service and we'll change this to a 50-50 split between the two types of services. We'll write our configuration and refresh our service. Since the Kubernetes service was deployed net new, there's no data in our database yet. Our previous service had our virtual machine entry in it. It appears our traffic is splitting 50-50 successfully. Let's go ahead and switch this to a full cutover to the Kubernetes-based API service. We can change this to 100, set this to zero, write our configuration again, and we can see that we're consistently hitting the Kubernetes-based database now. And we're able to successfully write data to the database. At this point, we've successfully migrated our application from running in virtual machines into a Kubernetes cluster without disrupting customer access to our application. As customer environments grow more and more complex and virtual machines and Kubernetes clusters are living side by side, this capability becomes critically important as we need to be able to manage the way that traffic gets into and out of applications that customers care about. I hope you've enjoyed this video around HashiCorp console service on Azure and seeing how we can migrate resources using console Stay tuned for more videos in the future. Have a good day.